Welcome to Haker Equipment Company's training on Elgin Crosswind. Model J3000 and up including Tier 4. Operator class on Operator Maintenance and Washdown. My name is Carrie Alcott. The titles of this series of the Crosswind training are Operating Principles, Component Adjustments, Inside the Cab Controls, Water System Power Unit and Fan, Operator Maintenance and Washdown, and Options. Operator Daily Maintenance The maintenance chart is on one of the wing doors of the sweeper. Non-Tier 4 is on the right side and Tier 4 is on the left door. The maintenance chart has grouped items to be checked daily, 50 hours or once a week, 150 hours or once a month, 500 hours or every six months, and 1,000 hours or annually. On the daily schedule, the first item is to check the auxiliary engine oil level. Depending on the engine, the dipstick might be in different locations. John Deere dipstick. John Deere Tier 4. The dipstick is part of the oil fill spout. The North American oil spec is shown on the cap. Only use API the CJ4 low ash oil. Any tier 4 engine uses low ash oil only. Using the wrong oil can cause plugging of the diesel particulate filter. Inspect auxiliary engine coolant level. The tier 4 system has a reservoir with sight glasses to check the coolant level. The older systems have an overflow bottle near the radiator. Always check the radiator cold to assure proper level. Elgin uses ethylene glycol antifreeze. Check pickup head pressure slot. Clean and adjust if necessary. The pressure slot should be one half inch gap or the thickness of your finger. If there is dirt or trash plugging the air slot passage, it has gone through the fan to get there. You need to find the reason why and correct it. Check the hydraulic tank oil level. The hydraulic tank is located on the left side of the sweeper. On a CNG sweeper, you can find the hydraulic tank under the auxiliary engine on the right side of the sweeper. The correct oil level is between add and full arrows with the hopper down. Do not start the sweeper if there is no oil in the sight glass. Elgin's recommendation for hydraulic oil. Castrol dual range HV68 or equivalent. Multi-viscosity hydraulic fluid that provides proven anti-wear protection and anti-foam additives. The new Castrol hydraulic oil may be identified by its purple color. An ISO 68 or 46 is determined by your operating temperature. An ISO 46 is a lighter viscosity and will dissipate heat faster. AW46 is what Haker has been using for years and is right for our climate. Do not use multipurpose or universal hydraulic oil. They can hold too much heat in the system and cause damage to the O-rings and the plastic backing rings inside the valve blocks. Check air filter restriction indicator. The restriction indicator is next to the fan housing. When the yellow plunger inside raises to the red line, clean the filter. Only pull the air filter out of the canister when the restriction indicator reads high. Only clean an air filter by tapping lightly with your hand. Do not beat it on the ground or use air pressure to clean it. 
Beating the filter on the ground will shock and rip the paper. Air pressure will blow holes in the paper. Lightly tapping the filter will get the majority of the dirt. A dirty filter filters better than a new filter. The inner safety filter is not to be removed unless dirty. If you see a color change on the inner filter, it's telling you that the outer filter is bypassing dirt. Check your batteries. The sweeper battery is located at the front of the sweeper body next to the engine. You are looking for loose cable connections and dirt sitting on top of the battery. If the dirt is wet, it could cause an electrical draw from the battery. Inspect the spray water nozzles. Check the nozzles at the gutter brooms to assure they are not plugged. The position of these nozzles can be adjusted. The nozzle to the left could contact some curbs and be pulled off or damaged. Check the nozzles at the pickup head in the suction tube. Remember these are the nozzles most important to help protect the fan. On PM10 systems, check the nozzles inside the hopper. Inspect spray water level. Check that you have water to start your day. Fill the water tank as needed with the hydrant hose. Clean water spray filter. Turn off the ball valve at the filter and remove the canister. Don't lose the o-ring and rinse the filter and the housing. Make sure the o-ring is in place and reinstall. Before tightening, open the ball valve and allow it to overflow to push the air out. Do not over tighten, you won't get it back off by hand. Check broom patterns. Make a pattern on the ground by starting the brooms and letting them run for 30 seconds. Turn the brooms off and pull forward enough to see the broom pattern covered by the drag shoes of the pickup head. Check centerboard for position. The front and the back of the board is adjustable. Inspect the chain links for wear. The rubber deflector should not touch the ground. Adjust far left for leaves and a half inch off the ground. Check the vacuum enhancer. Check that it is functional. Remember that the vacuum enhancer is a critical part of the sweeping process. Diesel engines drain the water separator on the fuel filter. The drain is on the bottom of the filter. Only drain the water and stop. Don't drain all the fuel out of the filter. You could cause an airlock in the injectors. End of shift, wash down the entire sweeper. Fill the water tank as needed with the hydrant hose. Proper washdown will be discussed later in this video. Check hopper door seal. You should check all seals for cleanliness and damage. Service truck chassis. Driver daily safety inspection. Fluid levels and fuels. Check tire inflation pressure and tread depth. Running with low air pressure in the tires will put more pressure on your drag shoes and wear them out faster. Use a gauge to check tire pressure and the proper pressure is labeled on the sidewall of the tire. Check impeller fan housing seal. Any air leak takes away from the suction you need to pick up debris. The transition on the body is adjustable. Putting grease on the fan housing seal 
Then lower the body to make a grease impression on the transition to see if it's adjusted correctly. It is a recommendation of mine to lubricate the fan bearing once a day after the washdown using a hand grease gun only and two pumps of grease only with the proper grease. Operator Weekly Maintenance Looking at the 50 hour or weekly section, the following are the operator's responsibilities. Inspect the impeller for wear. I recommend that this be done daily after the washdown. Remove the inspection cover and inspect the fan. Do this only with the ignition keys in the off position and in your pocket. Turn the fan by hand and look at each blade for debris buildup and wear. If your fan is starting to show wear, then you're operating incorrectly. Fan wear is from too high of engine RPMs and carryover going through the fan. Or the water spray system is not functioning correctly. The three spray nozzles in the suction are the most important to protect your fan. Grease hopper door latch pivots. There are two grease fittings each side of each latch for a total of six fittings. Check side broom angles and adjust as necessary. Right side 11 o'clock to 3 or 5 degrees forward and 5 degrees outward. Inspect the water spray pump. Non-PM10 systems use electric pumps. Check to make sure each is working. The PM10 pump could be belt driven. Do not over tighten this belt. Check the mounting hardware for tightness. Proper washdown. All air ducting, dust separator, and screens need to be cleaned to allow more air to flow for better sweeping. The fan and pressure slot should be inspected after washdown for debris buildup and clean as needed. An optional deluge system is available to assist flushing the hopper with a fire hydrant. This should only be used in a wash rack with a clarifier. Using the hydrant hose and connecting to the deluge system. With the hydrant on, working the door up and down will get the majority of the debris. Use a hand hose to clean the hopper thoroughly. Lower the screens to ease cleaning. The screen handle has a latch you push to the left. Grab the handle and pull towards you, then back forward to bring the screen down. Lower gently and don't let the screens just drop. The screen could pop off the hinge and come at you. Rinse the dust separator. Look up into the fan opening. There's a catch that needs to be cleaned. Shoot water up into this catch. The water should flow to the left side back into the dust separator. Clean the fan transition seal and the suction hose seal. Clean the body contact areas for those seals. Start the auxiliary engine and let it run at idle. Pick up head down, vacuum enhancer closed, aim water from the wash hose into the fan housing. Do this long enough to see clean water coming out from underneath the pickup head. Avoid hitting hot engine exhaust manifold with water. After rinsing the fan, shut the engine off and put the keys in your pocket. Remove the fan housing inspection cover and inspect the fan. 
Check and clean debris buildup on the blades of the fan down by the shaft. You could turn the fan by hand to get to the next blade, nine total. If not clean, a buildup of debris will cause a vibration. Raise the pickup head and look under to check the pressure slot. If debris carried over, it could stop at the pressure slot and have plugged it up. If there is debris stopping airflow, when sweeping there will be a streak of unswept area on the ground.